Okay, testing. Testing, testing. testing. <laughs> So I'm Palak Trivedi um, from the UK and I'm delighted to be here in lovely Amsterdam for the annual International Liver Congress. It's the biggest liver meeting of the year where we see cutting edge advancements in the field of liver disease and particularly this year we've got lots on autoimmune and cholestatic diseases, especially PSE, which is absolutely fascinating. Thank you, Palak. And this afternoon we've got the Late Breaker session telling us about the long-awaited Norurso trial. Can you tell us a little bit about what we do know about that at the moment? So the Norurso deoxycholic acid trial is grounded in absolutely brilliant, basic, uh, fundamental and translational science. Norurso deoxycholic acid is a modified version of urso deoxycholic acid. It lacks what we call a side chain from it, which means most of the beneficial things that we associate with urso in other liver diseases are concentrated around the liver and bile ducts in PSC. And the molecule itself was founded just over 20 years ago by a colleague and friend, Professor Michael Trauner in Austria. And that molecule has been tested extensively in the lab, in animal models of primary sclerosing cholangitis, and more recently in clinical trials. Now, as many of you know, clinical trials and PSC are fraught with many challenges because you have the condition for many years and decades, not just for a few months. And most clinical trials cannot afford to run for that duration of time. And the second thing is PSE is rare, so it really requires a multi-centre concerted effort, preferably international, for these big programmes. Now, the Noroso deoxycholic acid phase 3 trial, called NUC5, uh, began enrolment pre-COVID pandemic and ended recruitment in 2022, uh, with two years further follow-up as a starting point that completed last year. And this is the first positive results uh, from a phase three clinical trial in PSC that we've probably had, certainly as long as I've been practicing and likely ever. And what does that mean? Well, the primary outcome of the neurosodeoxycholic acid phase three trial in PSC was to see if people who received the active treatment for two years compared to those individuals who received a placebo, so an inactive uh, um, non-drug equivalent, had a lower rate of disease progression. Now, disease progression here was captured by liver biopsies at baseline and following two years of treatment. That's the first phase, and I'll come on to the later phases in a moment. The second part of that was a reduction in liver biochemistry, specifically alkaline phosphatase, which are one of the components that we measure when you have your uh, blood tests. What it showed was that significantly more people uh, had disease stability on liver biopsy and a reduction in alkaline phosphatase in the actively treated group compared to those people who were treated for placebo for two years. Now, whilst it is a small proportion of the overall whole, so approximately 15 to 20 percent of people, depending on how you analyze the data, did not progress in that two year period uh, with PSC, and that was compared to a much smaller proportion in the placebo group. So, sort of you know, approximately five to nine percent, again, depending on how you square the data. There are obviously some caveats here and some subgroup analyses here. So for example, if depending on whether people were taking certain other medications like ursodeoxycholic acid, the effects of nor ursodeoxycholic acid were more pronounced in those without urso, less pronounced in people taking ursodeoxycholic acid. The other caveat is that this is a two year readout, which was the main outcome. There was a, there is a four-year endpoint, and I, I'm hopeful that we will see bigger differences with more people attaining disease stability at that four-year time point. And there is also a six-year time point as well, and we have to wait for those time points to elapse before we can say whether the drug affects more people, the same number of people, or whether people who have attained disease stability then start to lose control. We don't have those answers yet. But the fact that it met the primary outcome measure at two years, which is what the European regulators requested, is very encouraging. The most encouraging bit, though, is that it's a positive phase three trial, which we've never had before in PSC, and it gives other new medications with similar mechanisms of action in, in a similar population of people that were recruited to the NUC5 trial a way forward. It gives us a template on which to work on. I'm not saying every trial in future will require a liver biopsy, but at least this gives us a framework on which to base future trial uh, designs. 
And lastly, it also gives us insights into how PSE progresses over the course of time and uh, as well as what factors may be associated with attaining disease stability. So we're very excited. These are the first preliminary results. It's very much like a press release for us in the medical community. We await the full news article, the full publication, which will take time, have much more nuances, much more answers to some of the questions, important things like quality of life, etc., etc. And of course, we await validation in future clinical trials uh, in PSE using this compound and others. Thank you, Pala. And so this does mean that it won't be available for patients next week but we're very hopeful that continuing uh, positive results will mean that it might well be at one day. And I understand you're going to be hearing some more results about this trial later on this afternoon. So will you report back to us if you learn anything new? Uh, yes, absolutely. So we look forward to doing um, a, a Q&A with PSC supports, not just on the NUT5 trial, but everything that we've seen at the uh, PSC uh, uh, related se um, sessions here at the International Liver Congress and following the presentation today which will be available online for us to see as, uh, as registrants we will have much more insight into what the programme means and I'm very grateful particularly to the UK PSE population because we were the lead site to recruit into this trial which was a, a big achievement so please continue to participate in clinical trials and clinical research because only then will we find a cure for PSE. Thank you very much, Palak, and I know you're very busy today, so okay. thank you for giving us that time.